Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Good morning, Kirk. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday service this Lord's Day at the Kirk of Kansas City. We're so glad that you are with us, whether you are joining us here in person or joining us online. If you are worshiping with us here, take a moment, help us find our ritual friendship pads in your pews, fill it out, let us know you're here. You can leave it in the offering plates as you leave the sanctuary. Thank you for your help with that task this morning. Uh, on this Sunday after Christmas, many of our friends are joining us online and our deacons are taking a break from hosting fellowship hour. Uh, so no goodies after worship this week, but do say hi to everyone as you leave worship today. Uh, share uh, the peace of Christ, greet one another. Uh, our deacons will be back with coffee hour next Sunday. Uh, for those of you who are joining us online, a hearty word of welcome to you as well. If you're new around here, I'm Chad Herring. I'm the pastor of the Kirk. We are a Christian community seeking to follow God on the way of Jesus Christ and part of the Presbyterian Church USA. You can learn more about this church at our website. Look for kckirk.org or find us on social media, the Kirk of KC. My contact information is there on the screen. If you want to get a hold of me as well, I'd be glad to talk to you anytime. Our motto around here is community-minded, loving, and serving. Help us build community online by uh, sharing a word in our chat rooms on Zoom or on Facebook. Let us know what's going on uh, and how Christmas is going for you. You can also uh, submit prayer requests, particularly if you're watching live. We'll gather all of those prayer requests and include them in our common prayer just a little bit later in our service today. We just have a couple of announcements today. This is a holiday week for, for many of us, and the church office office will be closed Monday and Tuesday this week with reduced hours for the rest of the week. If you plan to stop by, uh, we recommend that you call ahead first to make sure someone's here to help you, and you can always send me a note, of course, and I'd be glad to help you out. Um, this is always one of the most beautiful seasons of the church year, starting with Christmas Eve, uh, throughout the season of Christmas, those 12 days, right, uh, of Christmas that conclude on the day of Epiphany, January the 6th. Uh, this week, we're trying something new for the first Sunday of Christmas. This is a service of lessons and carols. We're going to uh, look forward to hearing the word of promise from Holy Scripture, along with some of our most beloved and beautiful carols. And then next Sunday, the 2nd of, of January, we're going to observe the day of Epiphany in worship with an annual tradition that's the distribution of our star words uh, for a new year. We hope that you can join us next Sunday uh, for what we think will be a great service. That service will also include the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Uh, if you're worshiping with us online, plan to have a little bit of bread and juice with you so you can join us at the welcome table because there is always a seat for you at God's table. We hope that you can join us next Sunday, church, either online or on site. And finally, I wanted to offer a very quick word of gratitude to Marsha. Welcome, Marsha. Welcome back. Um, Aaron and Stephen uh, found out yesterday that their daughter has a fever, and Stephen is now quarantined uh, in COVID protocols. Uh, Aaron has tested negative so far, but and she really, she really, 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 really wanted to be here this morning. I think that's how many really she told me to say. I think I counted that right. Um, but the place she needs to be this morning is at home uh, helping her family. So she asked me to tell you that she is so sorry that she is not here today. Uh, this was to be her last Sunday as our church organist and accompanist. We think uh, she'll be back to join us as a worshiper in the near future. She sends her love to each and every one of you. Um, we do have a hymnal uh, on the welcome table. Uh, many of you have already written a few notes uh, of love to her. If you haven't done that yet, and you want it to be in the hymnal that we give her, there's a pin, and uh, the hymnal is out there. Please do that before you exit uh, worship today. Thank you for that. Marsha, thankfully, was ready and able to stand by, um, answered uh, your phone on Christmas Day. Grateful to you for that. Um, we're so glad that you are here. It is really wonderful to lead worship again with you, Marsha. Thank you. Um, friends, now that we're done with these announcements, we can get started. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. I invite all of you who are able to stand uh, as we call ourselves to worship, reading responsibly the words in your bulletin or on the screen. Please join me. Jesus said, this is my Father's house, so come into this space just as you are. So come into this space bringing your true self. So come into this space knowing that you are welcome and that you belong. Come into this space as you truly are. This is God's home. This is our home. Let us worship God. Let's worship God together. Amen. Let's all join in our first hymn, Once in Royal David City, number 140.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. When challenging moments come, we hope to respond with grace, but more often than not, fear can get the best of us. So today we turn to God in prayer, asking for God's guidance and grace in the places and moments we need it most. Please join me as we pray our prayer of confession together. We could offer welcome, but we often choose judgment. We could choose action, but we choose choose. We could choose advocacy, but we often choose comfort. We could choose truth, but we often choose ignorance. We could choose God, but we often choose ourselves. Forgive us, gracious God, for the moments when we choose poorly. Open our hearts to choose you, to choose community, to choose love. Gratefully we pray, amen. Dear friends, no matter what we choose, God will never abandon us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So may we accept God's grace and use it to fuel for better days. My friends, hear this great and joyous news. In Christ, we are all forgiven. Amen. Please be seated. So our service of lessons and carols takes us on a journey through Scripture as we listen for the movement of the Holy Spirit through the expanse of God's time from early days, thousands and thousands of years ago, up until the birth of Jesus Christ at the turn of a new era. Our first reading recalls God's promise to Abraham, one of the first ancestors of our faith. This is Genesis 22, 15 to 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Join me as we now sing our first carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. You can remain seated.
The songs offer us a glimpse at the inner spiritual and emotional life of the people of God, an original songbook for the Hebrew people. Psalms 13 is a song of yearning, where the author asks God when liberation will come and the world will set back upright. Listen with me for the, God's word through us, through Psalms 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear in so pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O my Lord, my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trust, trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because God has dwelt, dealt bountifully with me. Please join me in our next, as we sing our next carol, Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. Our next reading from the prophet Isaiah is familiar to us because we read it on Christmas Eve. It's a reminder of God's promise to provide light in the darkness. We remember that the darkness itself is not what's concerning. It is where God moves and loves and creates where Jesus was born. Light illuminates our days and guides us in God's paths of love. This is Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 uh, and 6 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. I can tell you, I hear you up front singing. The acoustics in this room are wonderful, grateful for your songs and your words. Together, let's sing the next carol. It came beyond, uh, upon a midnight clear Verses 1, 2, and 5. Let's sing together.
Thank you again, Chad, for not making me read those Isaiah verses for the fourth time this year. <laughs> Later in the prophet Isaiah, we hear Isaiah's vision for a peaceful kingdom, a world where God's justice and love will reign. The stump of Jesse mentioned here is a reference to the exile of the people from their homeland, a time when they felt alone and lost and far from home. Isaiah sees God's moving among the people even so, and looks forward to a day where people will peace will prevail. This is Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 4 and 6 through 9. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and are the, and, and the fatling together and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters covered the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we'll sing the next two verses, first two verses of Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming. Generations after the prophet Isaiah, we see a different set of foreign powers dominating the lives of the people, and we begin to hear a different sort of divine activity. The gospel, according to Luke, tells about Gabriel's visit to Mary, an ordinary young woman in an ordinary town just going about her life. This is Luke 1, 26 through 35 and verse 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. 
He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be, he will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. And now together we will sing our next carol, Hark the Herald Angel Sing, number 119. Just as the angels promised, Mary became pregnant. She gave birth to her son, Jesus the Christ. Here's a reading from the second chapter of the Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. That was the first registration and was taken while Cornelius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was ascended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. She gave, him, she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. We respond to this great gift with great joy and incredible amazement. Join me as we sing together, Away in a Manger.
the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that had taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. Our next carol captures this encounter that the shepherds had with the angels. Let's sing Angels We Have Heard on High. In Matthew's version of the birth of Christ that Christmas morning, we learn that there was a star in the heavens announcing Jesus' birth. Wise people, magi, from the east saw the star and wondered what it meant. They set out to learn for themselves. This is Matthew 2, 1 through 11. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For from, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd to my people Israel. Then secret, Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from him the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, Bring me words so I may too go and pay him homage. 
When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of him, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overjoyed and overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This next carol is an old favorite. We three kings of Orient are on page 151, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 5. The Gospel of John is just a little bit different. It doesn't record a birth story, but it does try to think about where Jesus came from and particularly the importance of Jesus for this world. Please listen as we read from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the light and the life was the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came to testify as witness to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of human beings, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to go ahead and stand for our final hymn as we conclude the service of Lessons and Carols with Go Tell It on the Mountain.
Please be seated. You are as lovely as any choir of angels, dear Kirk. <laughs> Friends, our worship service always includes a moment of thanksgiving. This is our opportunity to make note of God's gifts in our lives, where we pledge ourselves to use those gifts as God invites us to use them, namely, to make this world a better place for others, to reinvest them in other people and for the common good. In thanksgiving, we seek to share what we have so that others may thrive. It's often through our sharing that God's care, God's presence becomes known in this world. Today, we pledge to serve others even as Christ has served us. This Christmas, we are particularly grateful to respond to this amazing gift of the newborn Jesus with generous hearts. Whether you are here in the sanctuary or watching from places far away, look for ways where you can cultivate a loving and compassionate spirit through your actions and your service. Today, we are collecting the Christmas Joy Offering. This is a special extra mile offering where we collect donations that provide emergency assistance to current and retired church workers, and that also helps provide leadership development for Presbyterian-related schools and colleges equipping communities of color. Information, and I think special envelopes are available in the Narthex. Um, if not, you can just write the word Christmas Offering on a piece of paper or on your check or, or in an envelope. We have few envelopes for you. Uh, if you're online, you can ch uh, contact the church office about how you can help. Um, we are uh, collecting this offering today alongside our regular offering, um, and we do have offering plates in the lobby where you can leave your gifts. Or you can check out our website or call the church office for other ways that you can support our ministry and our mission. Today, in particular, we thank you for your many gifts to our common ministry. Thank you for your spirit of generosity, for all you do to be Christ's hands and feet in the world. I invite you to join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Let's pray together. Thank you, God of love. For the promise of this season, we are grateful for the generosity aroused in us by Christ's coming into the world. May our gifts and our giving represent a new spirit of sharing among us for the sake of all your children everywhere. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Now we're going to turn to our time of community prayer. I'm going to lift up some prayer concerns that are common to our church community. If you're watching with us and you don't know these folks, that's okay. Just send along a good word and send your best thoughts along anyway. If you're online, now is the time to share your prayer requests in and we'll gather them together and share them too. We're going to end each of our prayer requests with the words, O Lord, hear our prayer. You can join me with that. Let's say that. O Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today as we have now for 21 months for our ongoing struggle against COVID-19, for those who have died both here and abroad, for those who continue to wrestle with the lasting impacts of this disease. We pray for families and for loved ones, for healthcare workers and everyone who works to build healthy, strong, coronavirus-free communities. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the ongoing struggle against systemic racism as we seek to do our part to end racism in our lives and in the land. We ask God to help us claim this work as our own as we join with others who follow Jesus Christ and everyone of goodwill who seeks to love their neighbor as themselves. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Longtime friend and member Jean Stewart has entered hospice care in Carson City, Nevada. We offer prayer for her. She's being cared for her family and her loved ones. We pray for her strength and her comfort this morning. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. We lift up other names that have been part of our ongoing prayer life as a church community. Bob Melton, Linda Massoud, Michael Lyons, Betty Price, Betty Vose, Betty Slusher, Gloria McDonald, the McEachin and Young families, um, Clint Cleeseth, Winnie Nielsen, Francis Dean, Eileen Mitchell, Brenda Beckley, uh, Marjorie Langford, Rachel Smith, Don Daniels, Quindy Veach, Bill and Larry Neal, Donald Rosberg, Kate Schaefer, the people of the Cameroon, and we pray for this Kirk that God will continue to knit us together. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, from the online group, uh, the Bennetts offer prayers today for the family of Diana Snyder. Diana died on Wednesday. We have prayers of comfort and love for uh, the Bennett's family and for the family of Diana Snyder. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, Onito Templeton offered prayers today for the family of Carlos Garcia. Carlos was killed in Kansas City, Kansas on Wednesday. We offer prayers of mourning uh, for his uh, passing as well as love for those who miss him today. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. With the these prayers that we speak aloud and the prayers that all of us hold in our hearts, let's turn to God with a spirit of prayer. Please pray with me. Loving and compassionate one, in Jesus Christ, your word became flesh to birth love in our hearts and peace in our world. As we celebrate this gift of new life in Christ, we gather our prayers of joy and concern 
and offer them to you, a gift of our own trust and love, confident that you will shape them and use them to, shape, to strengthen our lives and the whole world. We lift up prayers for ourselves, our worries, our struggles, and particularly our hopes for a better, more loving, more peaceful world. Thank you for your ongoing care in our lives, the way you nurture our gifts, and encourage us to share them with others. With wise seekers of old, help us keep mindful of the ways that we can use our gifts and our talents and our skills to help others, to serve you, to build a joyful community. Particularly guide us in the way of seeking after your justice and reconciliation in this, your world. We pray today for those we know and care about who seek wholeness of body or mind or spirit, who are dealing with a host of medical concerns, from heart disease to diabetes to cancer to Parkinson's. We lift up all who are living with HIV AIDS, those with dementia and their caregivers, for everyone who wrestles with mental illness and depression. May your strength be with all of us, we pray. Where healing is possible, we ask for it. Help us to rest our finite bodies in your infinite love and care, O God of healing and love. We continue to pray for those in our community who seek to do the right, who shoulder great responsibility. We lift up first responders, medical professionals, public health workers, therapists. We pray today for insight and patience as we struggle together against COVID-19. We pray for the health and safety and vitality of communities near and far, as we particularly pray for those who recover from storms and hurricanes and wildfire. We particularly pray for neighbors and our neighborhoods. We pray for peace, peace in our city, peace in our country, peace with our neighbor, peace around the world. And as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught us, we pray today for anyone who wishes to do us harm. In your love and in your wisdom, guide us, we pray, O Prince of Peace. Lord Jesus Christ, hope of the world, help us bear witness to your light so that all may believe and have life in you. We celebrate your birth among us and pledge to focus our hearts on that incredible gift so that we may live fully and be your people. We offer this prayer today in your name as we together say the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to just take a quick moment to mention one final pr prayer that came in after we began praying. Uh, Beth Lucas shares prayers for Barbara Gibbons. She's dealing with a painful spinal fracture. Barb, if you're able to watch, we offer prayers and love to you. And we offer you prayers this day and always for your comfort and your safety. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. Dear friends, I invite all of you who are able to stand as together we sing our final hymn, Joy to the World.
dear friends, during these cool days, warmer days, cooler days, and long nights, we gather to take strength in the promise of God's abiding love and the witness we each share in Christ's coming. Take heart, for Christ is born, a newborn babe in Bethlehem, hope for the world. May we give thanks for this incredible gift as we seek to share that gift of love and compassion with everyone. So now go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be yours today, tomorrow, and forever. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.